Warp hugs. I'm annoyed because I took off of work. I did a whole bunch of other stuff. I've been working most of the day. And about two hours ago, I found out that um, I'm not closing on Wednesday. I'm not closing tomorrow. I'm just... Mm, um. So I've spent the better part of a couple hours on the phone with some people trying to get things canceled and everything else like that. Because my lender decided, oh, wait, I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that that was the case. I mean, blah, 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 blah. I, my head is exploding. War Pugs, um, today we're going to be checking out a request from Mr. Foldem, uh, uh, ooh, God, ooh, mm, from Mr. Formalhalt. And this is on Pointless Hubs when Hollywood made two videos about saving the White House. Now, Honestly, this isn't the first time they've done stuff like this. Typically, whenever they, for whatever reason, especially in the you know early to early 2000 to 2010, and even before then, they would release two movies about the same thing pretty much back to back. I mean, um, you would have pretty much not identical but close in plot it it would it would seem like they just got the idea at the same time and took different directions to run with it watch out cat so a couple of examples of this are you know one of one really good example of this is Armageddon and uh what is that place um impact deep impact both about the pretty much the same thing and asteroids coming to wipe out humanity and blah 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 now, usually when this happens, it's not two main studios doing it. You got you got you know you know Universal or Paramount Pit or Paramount or Cat or somebody else just sitting there releasing a video, and then you got some B studio making one as well. Sometimes though, it happens, and in this particular instance, two movies are made about the same, pretty much the same thing. Like Olympia, Olympia has fallen, Olympus has fallen, and White House down. Same. Movie, different actors, different whole thing. It, it's uncanny. War pugs. We're gonna jump into this. Cat. All right, come here. You're being annoying. Get down. Stop being a pest. You're being a pest. I got a hold of your skull. You're being a pest. Rubbing your skull. Stop being a pest. Um, stop it. What is your deal? This is what I live with. So, instead of moving today, instead of packing some stuff up, let's check this out. When Hollywood made two movies about the saving of the White House, my God. And the fun part about it is the two people that play the president also both played lawyers. Let's go. March 2013. Yes. You go to the movie theater to see Olympus Has Fallen. In it, the White House is under attack. The president is in danger. And the only person who can save him is one man. Yep. Who, against the odds, takes down the baddies and saves America. June 2013. You go to the movie theater again to see White House Down. In it, the White House is under attack. The president is in danger. And the only person who can save him is one man. Yep. Who, against the odds, takes takes down the baddies and saves America. Wait a second, something isn't right. Nobody saw White House down in theaters. Also, these movies uh, might have the same exact premise. They I guess do. we should probably talk about that. Let's go. Pointless, I'm gonna up, get this out of the way. This isn't some unique phenomenon. No. Two films with a similar setting. Yeah, d this is another one. Dante's Peak, which is, it's really good. I like Dante's Peak, and then Volcano, which um, James Earl Jones deserved better. ...or plot releasing within the same year has been a thing ever since movies existed. Yep. They're called twin films. You've probably recognized this from time to time, even if you didn't know the term. Why twin films happen in the first place isn't because of a simple answer. Hollywood is an interconnected machine, and sometimes scripts travel between multiple studios before being accepted. Sometimes coincidences just happen, you know? And we can't make any assumptions for why that is. Once in a while, <laughs> Hollywood just wants to make a movie about 19th century magicians in 2000s. 
The illusion is in the prestige! Six. Why these happen is a case-to-case -case situation. All that matters is that when they do, it's pretty funny. There was a year we had two movies about animated ants, two movies about an asteroid apocalypse, two movies about animated animals escaping from the zoo. <laughs> And who could forget those two movies about United 93? Oh, oh God. Jesus Christ. Ugh. I like to imagine there was one person in 2006 who went to both 9-11 movies and then compared them on entertainment value alone. Even Battle Los Angeles technically had a twin movie. It was called Skyline, which was also about aliens invading LA. But right. that's pretty much where the similarities ended. If you've never heard of Skyline, you know, that's fair. Many popular films we remember today strangely had twins that were forgotten to time. Like, one sibling went on to open a law firm while the other disappeared in 2004 after owing too much money to the mob. Like, you might know of Top Gun, a film that defined an era for a generation of Xers. You can be my wingman anytime. A film so <laughs> iconic that its sequel broke a billion solely by being not Marvel. Right. But Turns out there was another movie in 1986 that also involved young fighter seals. pilots called Iron Eagle. Oh, I thought he was going to say seals. I thought he was going to say that seriously because of the volleyball scene. What was it in the 80s in volleyball? He may know how to fly. Now he must learn how to fight. Upon its release, critic Kevin Thomas of the LA Times praised the film as ludicrous and a total waste of time. <laughs> but sometimes both twin films are released, and the common reception is just, eh, they were okay, I guess. Mm. And that was the fate that befell the two White House action thrillers, Olympus Has Fallen and White House Down. I want to talk about both of these because I think they're a good example of how differently you can execute a similar premise. The premise here being, the White House is under attack, and only this guy can stop it. Right. Both of these movies follow a pretty similar plot. So instead of telling you about two movies that both have a protagonist that has to save the White House from bad guys, <coughs> well, why don't we just combine it all? Let's do it. And I'll compare and contrast where necessary along the way. Sound good? Good. First thing I want to get out of the way is the budget. Which one of these do you think had the bigger budget? Look at a few clips, get a good idea. Now, if you answered White House down because, of course, that's where this joke is going, then you would be right. Both of these are about the White House getting attacked, yet the movie that costs twice as much to make looks significantly worse. The way these two movies utilize their budget is entirely different. Olympus was made on 70 million. White House Down, on the other hand, directed by everyone's favorite Roland Emmerich, looks like it was a lifetime movie special. Yes, the way it, White it. House Down is filmed just feels stale, cheesy. Ugh. Nothing about this feels like it was actually shot in DC. How are Emmerich movies only looking worse with each installment? Despite having less of a budget, Olympus makes you feel like the situation is, you know, kind of serious. Damn, the White House is getting attacked. That's insane. While White House Down feels like a video game, and it kind of makes you chuckle. Ha, <laughs> the White House is getting attacked. I saw that in Modern Warfare 2. Wee! Yep. So I guess I should talk about our protagonists. Look, I'm not gonna use any character names. This is Channing Tatum. Yes. I'm not gonna call him, uh, what'd they call him in this movie? John Kale? Man, they really swung for the fences with that one. He's 21 Jump Street guy. Fuck you, science! Starting off with Olympus is Fallen, <laughs> it stars Gerard Butler. He's one of the top agents in the Secret Service, ex-Special Forces, who's also close personal friends with the President and his little family. Yeah. It's Christmas time at Camp David and everyone's so wholesome to one another. The First Lady is charming and in a loving relationship with the President, so of course she's going to brutally die. Yes. Bye. Have a wonderful time. Ooh. Man, Two-Face cannot catch a break with women. Because of the- I know, right? I mean, damn! This little mishap butler is transferred to another department. Nobody really blames him for what happened, but the president doesn't really want to see his face because, you know, dead wife. I think this works pretty well for the story. We've established a personal relationship between these two characters, and also there's a realistic explanation for why he isn't inside the White House when, you know, bad thing happened. 
What about White House Down? Oh, he, uh, God. He's a vet and a cop, a divorce cop. In fact, he gets denied joining the Secret Service because he's told he just sucks. Loser! You're <laughs> a loser! So how does Channing find himself in a situation to save the White House? Well, you see, he was on a tour with his daughter, who hates him, but she really loves national monuments. She can't call her father dad, but she can name every fun fact of the executive branch. His special relationship with the president is by meeting him on the tour. Like what always happens. Stop lying to children. Little does the- <laughs> President know he'll soon have to team up with this random schlub because his entire security is populated by nothing but clowns. Right. Time to talk about the villains, who you might have already figured out for Olympus has fallen. The South Koreans are coming into town, and the US is meeting with them. Suddenly, an AC-130 is hijacked and it flies mysteriously towards DC. Air Force jets are scrambled and the president is brought into a secret underground bunker. Realistically, we all know that plane isn't going anywhere close to DC, even by miles. The second it was discovered to be going close to the capital, it'd be shot out of the sky. But you know, movie has to happen and we'll assume the military doesn't have- We said that prior to 9-11. We, uh, everybody said, everybody had these machinations in their head the second the capital was threatened like hidden missile pods would burst out of the lawn of the white house and all this other kind of crap would happen and blah 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 none of that happened of secret missiles or space lasers i mean all the plane really does is fly around for two minutes wreck up the place and then it gets shot out of the sky just like any good battlefield player would do they aim their falling craft to get the largest amount of casualties possible yeah as this craziness is occurring, it turns out the South Korean security detail was the wrong type of Korean the oh. whole time. E-Gads, it's the <coughs> North. Who could have seen this coming? Well, technically, it's not North Korea itself. This is actually a terrorist group called the Koreans for United Freedom, or KUF. They're not operating for Pyongyang. The they deny any involvement. Which is probably the movie's way of saying this conflict doesn't escalate after the end of the film. The KUF are like the League of Assassins, but for a communist Korea. Their right. planning has at least a bit of strategy to it. No, they it repurpose doesn't. civilian vehicles, successfully orchestrate their assault, and even have guys on the inside to capture the president, even though they shouldn't be in the secret bunker at all. They're led by Kang, not that Kang, one of the world's deadliest terrorists, who's never had his face photographed before. So Until that's how now. he was able to infiltrate the White House. It's like if Osama bin Laden snuck up on George Bush. Kang wants the US 7th Fleet to leave East Asia, and for all those US troops in the South to just go away. Which is quite the demand. I don't think the federal government would sit around pondering these options. So what about White House Down? Who are the bad guys who are trying to take down Jamie Foxx? who is in no way similar to a politician that was around in 2013. Okay. It's so dumb. Okay. Please don't demonetize me, YouTube. I didn't know this before making this video, but it turns out the bad guys are just racist. Carl Pretty Kelly. much. This guy's a right-wing sociopath. Tried to blow up his local post office because they employed too many African Americans. So apparently, they don't like Jamie Foxx because he's Obama. You're selling this country out to the Arabs. Whoa, 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 whoa. And also Pretty much. because he wants to, and I quote, take all of the troops out of the Middle East, the specifics of which are never told. Right. All that's said is that this is a good thing, and bad racist people, plus the military industrial complex, don't want it to happen. But those guys that run those corporations have been in bed with these radical regimes for years. All they want to do is keep the cycle of war going. So, really? Movie. Does anyone else find it ironic that the very clearly Obama president doesn't want civilians bombed? When was this written? 2007? But plot twist. It turns out the main bad guy the whole time was James Woods. What are you doing? Consider this my resignation. You, you can't make this up. So how does this gang of mercenaries take over the White House? Pretty easily, to be honest. Like, they just disguise themselves as janitors. They then, without much resistance at all, an alien. Where? Ah! just take over the White House. This was dumb. Olympus, it felt like a real battle to overrun the White House. Sure, it took some questionable tactics, 
but you know, it kind of felt earned by the villains to actually take it. Like, a lot of people die, there are still bodies lying around at the end of the movie, and yet in White House, it just doesn't feel like a center of the US government is under attack. It feels like this is a soundstage, and they could only afford to have a few extras because they blew the budget on getting Jamie Foxx to sign up for this. Now here's the thing. I'm gonna skip through both of these films. Here's a quick summary. Let's Bad go. guys attack, hostages are taken, one man tries to save the president, the government is trying to coordinate on the outside, they launch a raid by helicopter which ends in disaster, yep. bad guys are taken out one by one, somewhere along the way an important kid is rescued, and then at the very end the main boss explains his master plan involving the nation's stockpile of nukes, which were the real target all along. There you go, I just saved you four hours. I think there was a joyriding scene somewhere in between there, I don't really know. While the overall story beats are scarily identical, both of these movies differ from one another in tone. Olympus Has Fallen is an R-rated action movie. The violence is quick, and the situation played completely straight. People are being executed. Our protagonist tortures a few guys. The president is pretty much held hostage inside a bunker for the entire movie. He's the Princess Peach to our Mario, yep. which leaves him with nothing to really do other than be very angry. White House down to- yeah, he just looks constipated non-stop throughout this. Despite being about actual neo-Nazis and blow up the capital, the tone is overall lighter. It's a dumb summer action movie. Jamie Foxx as the president doesn't stay captured in a bunker all day. He shoots a rocket launcher. Yeah, it's just a good romp fighting side by side with the president. It has a cheese this ending too, oh my god. President, just like that time with JFK. Lock and load. With that out of the way, that brings us to the end of our films. The enemy force has been defeated, our heroes are face to face with the boss, and all is finally revealed. In Olympus, Kang secretly planned from the beginning to bring the president down into the secret bunker. As you can see, Kang knew about this top secret project called Cerberus. <laughs> a classified failsafe that would explode any nuclear bomb in the U.S. arsenal if it was accidentally launched. The password to Cerberus is split between three high-ranking officials, including the President and Secretary of State. Cerberus can only be accessed in that bunker that they're stuck in and nowhere else. Yay. So the whole movie, Kang is just torturing people to get this info. The President is the last holdout. He'll never tell until he does. With his demands to move the fleet and leave South Korea, the government fears he's doing this to leave the U.S. defenseless. Well, with the final <laughs> code entered, it's finally revealed his grand plan all along was to blow up every U.S. nuclear weapon in its silos. The silo doors are closed! Whose idea Whee! was it in this top secret project to include an explode everything button? The project was created to be a last minute failsafe before hitting a target. Like the missile explodes in midair and nuclear war is just averted or something. My only question here is, when would it ever be necessary to explode all of your nukes at once in midair. How was this option ever intended to be used properly? Coin operated self destructs. Not one of my better ideas. <laughs> White House Down is somehow less eventful than almost blowing up the whole country, which is pretty hard to top, but that doesn't mean they didn't try. Right. As you see, James Woods, who betrayed the president, was angry that his son died in a raid that Jamie Foxx ordered. So his ultimate plan is to use the US nukes to blow up the entire Middle East. The Middle East is our last war. It will be us. Or them. So if you're watching this in Saudi Arabia... <laughs> and his reasoning <laughs> is so no American ever dies there again. Which, man, that's some logic, ain't it? The less Damn, son, um... The lesson here isn't don't invade the Middle East. The lessons wipe out the Middle East so we don't have an urge to invade it again. Obviously, by the end of both movies, these plans don't work. 
our heroes walk out of the White House, beaten up but glad that the day was victorious. Hooray. They bonded together, retaking the executive branch and maybe even learning something about each other and themselves along the way. There's no way there's any horrific political ramifications for this at all. How were these terrorists able to disguise themselves as janitors or South Koreans? This seems like it was a horrific security breach, doesn't it? Yes. It's just never discussed again that the president gave up the nuclear codes and almost nuked the country. At the end of the day, the reaction for both of these films was a solid meh. The biggest thing that made both of them stand out in the first place was how similar they were to one another. Pretty it's much. It's their biggest legacy, this one joke. Olympus ended up actually making a decent profit, bringing in 170 million, meaning there is just enough of an excuse to spawn a sequel and then a third movie, which I didn't even know existed until doing this video. I don't know if either of these are good because I never saw them. At least they're keeping people employed, I guess. The same cannot be said for White House Down. Despite its massive budget and better summer slot, it was a flop. Well, it made up yep. its budget at least, but for what it was advertised. It's doing better than most Marvel movies are doing these days. ...as Daz, and compared to Emmerich's previous films, it underperformed hard, which is a trend that he has not escaped from. Right. Despite being so similar... <coughs> that was fun. These movies offered very different experiences. Okay, maybe not very different, slightly different experiences. And whether one was better than the other really just depended on your personality, I guess. You want to see something really special? No. Yeah? Yeah? Carol. Henry, the president wants to do the thing. There you go. Yes, Olympus was better. Olympus was a lot better. White House Down was so bad on so many different levels, it actually upset me. White House Down annoyed me. The script was cheesy. The concept was stupid. Everything about it was stupid. War Pugs. I should have watched something that would make me laugh, would make me smile, something like that. Not something where I'm looking at two movies that were literal clones of each other, only one was the successful clone that actually went on to be a doctor or something, and the other one is sitting there doing meth, which is White House Down. The, the amount of times that... I watched terrible, terrible movies and went on to hate myself for doing it. My brother was responsible for a lot of them. We, when me and my brother were growing up, uh, when, when he finally got it, when he got his license and we started going to uh, watch movies and stuff like that, we had an agreement. We'd pick, you know, one of us would pick one, one of us would pick the next, you know, that's just how it went. But if you ever pick something so egregious, <laughs> the other person got to pick the next three. And he picked some really, really horrifyingly bad movies. War Pugs, I'm gonna jump. Uh, Godzilla 1998, the worst Godzilla movie. It wasn't a Godzilla movie. And the 2001 Planet of the Apes spawned more memes than anything else. War Pugs, don't let your memes be dreams, but if you're in the movie business, leave the memes alone, please. Pointless Hubs links are going to be in the description below. I will somehow recover from this annoyance that's going on right now with, with my house. I will be back with you guys. I'll find out when the next time I'm supposed to be closing on this house is because I got so hyped about it. I'll catch you, War Pugs, next time.